One of the most important facets of any business is customer service. In business, you are not only selling a product or a service, but an experience. Providing exceptional customer service and developing real relationships with your clients means increased sales, retain customers, new customers via word of mouth, and a positive reputation. You're listening to the Focus on Customer Experience Podcast. Podcast. Benjamin Del Grosso gives you the ins and outs of one of the most underlooked aspects in business today. Improve your customer service and watch your business skyrocket. Two, one. Now, here's your host, Benjamin Del Grosso. Hello and welcome to the show. Today, we got Greg Birch here today. So, Greg, why don't you tell us, you know, who you are, where you're from, and what do you do? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just, a, I'm just a, I guess, a country boy from Tennessee, um, originally from Tennessee, and uh, currently I live in, in Dallas, Texas area, and uh, I am a prior, <clears throat> I'm a prior Army officer. Uh, served for 11 years, a uh, veteran, went to serve in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And um, I've been in business for myself. I've owned my business for four years now, for going on four, yeah, four years now. Um, going on five, actually, since I've been out of the military. And so, yeah, it's a little bit about myself. Nice. Yeah, I know. Actually, Chris from the uh, group also served in Iraq. Okay. Yeah. And he, he took advantage of all the education and everything when he got back and mm -hmm. i think he's got like four or five businesses now too so <laughs> it's pretty that's pretty awesome that is that's awesome is it are you talking about chris mom uh chris warrens okay okay yeah so what are you talking about? but uh yeah so um what what was your most memorable experience as a customer um you know so so i was thinking about this <laughs> and uh and I, it, so you and I, we met through Arte, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, I'm a big fan of Andy Frisella and I'm not trying to suck up right now, but, um, I, I bought, I bought something from, from first form. I bought some, some apparel, some shorts, two pairs of shorts and a, a long sleeve t-shirt. And, uh, oh, and, and first off, um, I love that every single box that that's sent from anything from Andy Frisella, there's a handwritten note in there. That's like, that's that little touch right there is like makes the difference you know what i'm saying like yeah that's just super super high quality but um but i received uh when i when i made that order box came in and there was a pair of sh a pair of shorts a pair of pants and a shirt and so i was like hey I, and i was like did i order a pair of pants did i did i mess up and so i went back and looked at my order and i was like no i definitely ordered two pairs of shorts and so i called up you know and and immediately they're like, hey, Greg, how's it going? I was like, like what? Like, hey, Greg, how's it going? Did you just receive your order? And I was like, e yeah, I did. And they were like, awesome. How was it? And I was like, actually, um, I just I like I, you know, explained as I had uh, I'd ordered two pairs of shorts and I got a pair of pants. And he's like, okay, hold on, let me pull up your order. And he's like, what's the order number? And I, I told him. And he was like, yep, I got it right there, perfect. And he, he's going over it. And he's like, hey, I, I see that you should have got this and this. And I was, he's like, what pair of shorts did you get? And I told him. He's like, what kind of pants did you get? And I told him. He was like, awesome. You want to keep them? I was like, no, nah, they don't really fit, man. You know, even though it was an extra large, extra large, I'm, I'm six, seven. Like, I'm a big dude. So, <laughs> like, these are these like high waters. He's like, okay, no worries. He's like, we got the shorts. I'm getting them sent out. Here's, uh, there, there's going to be a, um, a, 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 a tag to put it, go ahead and send it back out to us so that we can put it back in stock. But, uh, hey, anything else from this? And I was like, no, nah, man, that's it. It was the fastest, easiest call. And it was just like the customer service was exceptionally high. And and that was like things like that are are unbelievable for a customer. Like I would rather, I would rather pay a premium for that kind of service versus paying less just to get something quicker or to not have to worry about it. You know, even if the even if the quality of the product's the same or higher, I would rather pay. Just because the service plus the quality plus everything else that's involved. Yeah, no. Um, so I got a little bit of a story. I have a, I have a client uh -huh. who contacted me. He, he text messaged me and basically said, um, you know, I got this uh, this this dash camera is just acting up. It's not working properly. So um, 
do you have any tricks on how to make it work or should I just take it and throw it out the window? And I'm thinking, uh, so I message him like, Hey man, don't throw it out the window. You have warranty on it. Right. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, but it's, it's not working properly. I'm like, well, I'll just come by and take a look at it. Does this such and such time work for you? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No problem. I came out there, looked at it. We determined it was defective and uh, here you go. Here's a new one. Oh, that was easy. I'm like, yeah, that's what customer service is all about, right? And and then and I go, I, I even have a podcast about it. And he's like, really? Oh, well, I drive lots. So he goes, boom, subscribes to it. Yep. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is cool. He goes, thanks for making it so easy. I'm like, well, shouldn't it be that easy? He goes, well, it's hard exactly. to find customer service nowadays, right? He goes, I'm expecting that you're just not going to help me out. And I'm like, yeah, but why would I do that? Like, I, I just... I don't understand like why I would do that personally, you know? So, but it just it's, goes to show, but that's like, so that's why I always try and make sure to do a one week follow-up with all my clients to let them mm-hmm. know that I'm here to help them because I mm-hmm. don't want them to have that whole, like it doesn't work and they throw it out the window and then just go buy another one. Cause that's yeah. not what I want to build my business off of. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You know, it's, it's crazy to me that something is simple, like they're so surprised that you stood by your product and you, and you went and helped them and you fixed it and you had good customer service that, you know, you know, from looking on the outside, I can see that one, you, you created a, probably a client for life, but also if you look at, um, have, have you ever read the, the book purple cow? No, I haven't. It's, it's a great book. It's a great book. It's, it's about marketing. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, and and the the concept behind it is that um, that there's there's like all products have been made, all products have been made. You know, so if you were to say like you were to make a new aspirin, and and you're trying to get that aspirin out in the market, how would you compete with all the other brands with the Tylenols, the Advils, the Advil Max Strength, the Excedrins, the the aspirin brand? How would you compete with them? Even if you had a superior product that that actually helped people. How do you stand apart? And it's and, and it's part of it is exceptional service because what you do is you have what's called the the law of innovation or law of diffusion of innovation. Okay, and that's that's the bell curve of how your product gets out to the market. Okay, so you you have to get to that small small early percentage, the early adopters that you know is your niche. Okay, so that niche market is those people that are like, if you were to compare it to Apple, those are the people that stand in line to get the new iPhone. That's their that's their niche market. That's the the ten percent of the market that's going to buy their product every single year, no matter what. Okay, so you have a niche market. And those are the people that are that that see you, that understand you, that understand the product. That is easy to market to. And you're marketing to them. You're not trying to market to the masses. You just market to them. And what happens is that with the with the good customer service, with the exceptional uh, service all all around, with, with and with the good product, it has what they it calls it. A, they in the book he calls it an idea virus. And he says that it spreads because you, these people become sneezers and they sneeze this idea of your product to everybody and they do the marketing for you. So they tell their friends, they, that, that story, I am sure he has told somebody. Yeah. I, so guarantee, I guarantee it. Cause that's the whole ripple effect, I guess is what I, I call it. Um, mm-hmm. And actually Brian from Arte, who I interviewed as well earlier in the week, he, he does no marketing at all. 100 percent word of mouth yeah. and i'm like what <laughs> but he's doing it he's busy you know and that's awesome like that he can do that so he's basically just you know that that's that, that's kind of old school marketing right but yeah but i mean if you can if you can pull that off and just keep your busy your business completely busy and you have people that are you know influencing everybody else around you that's it's very similar um, I have read a book called Raving Fans. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever read that one. I, I have not. So I haven't read it for probably over 10 years. But what they what they talk about, one of the examples in the book is imagine going into a store and you walk around with your shopping cart and you go and you buy everything, right? Now, let's say imagine that um, you now go into a different store. And somebody walks along beside you with your shopping cart and tells you, you should buy this because it's more healthier for you. And you should buy this and starts educating you on all the products in the store. 
Yeah. And you just keep coming back over and over and over again, because it's, you want that experience of somebody who's guiding mm-hmm. you through the store and helping you out and assisting you. Mm-hmm. And it's just talking about, it's trying to use that whole shopping experience and saying, that's how you create raving fans. People want to keep coming back over and over and over and over again. Yes. So yeah, that's interesting. I've heard of this uh, purple, purple, purple cow. cow. The reason he calls it the, <clears throat> the reason he titled the book Purple Cow is because in the beginning he tells a story of him and his son driving uh, when his son was very young, driving through these these farm fields across country in some state. I think it's like Idaho or something. I don't know, but he's driving through and his son see cows for the first time. Where they're from, they don't have any cows, and so his son's like, his son's like, Dad, Dad, there's a cow, there's a cow. And they're like, Oh my god, this is great. And they're like all freaking out. He's like, yeah, about four hours later, like you just see fields of cows. They're no longer important. They're no longer special because you've seen them for so long. And just like, man, it's another cow. Like, <laughs> it's like fields of cows everywhere. He's like, now, if you saw a purple cow, now that, that would be special. Now I'm going to look, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, how do you stand out in a field, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an industry, in any industry where you, you're trying to bring a product to life? that already exists. And here's the thing is that anything that you're bringing to market, it already exists. Any business you try to do, it already probably exists. So how do you stand out from the crowd? And it's always going to be exceptional service and exceptional product. That's yeah, it. People, people are going to be willing to pay a premium and people are going to be willing to spread the message of what you're doing just by how easy it was or simplicity or uh, like, for instance, I tell everybody about first form. I tell everybody about it. In fact, I got a text message yesterday and someone's like, dude, what should I get from first form? I told them everything you should buy. I literally gave them a list of like 10 supplements. I was like, dude, you got to get this, got to get this, got to get this, got to get this. He was like, dude, do you, do you have a, do you have a discount code? And I was like, no, bro, I don't have a discount code. No, nor does Andy give those out. I promise you. Like, <laughs> it's not about that. It's like, it's about getting the quality, you know? And I, and honestly, I wouldn't want a discount. I want to, I want to fund the business. Like I believe in it. And he was like, dude, awesome. Okay. Thanks. You know, and he, and he, and he uh, went and bought it. He was like, I got it, you know? But I, because of the exceptional service that I've gotten from First Form and like just the products, I love the products. I love that I get a letter. I love that if something's wrong, I could call them and they fix it immediately. They send me another one, no questions asked. Um, it, that to me is awesome. So I'll tell everybody about it. And, and if I can get one other person to change their life and use the product, then awesome. That's, that's the point of it. It's, this, is, this is just exact. Exactly. Because I've actually heard this from two other people in Arte, just on separate calls, not even on a podcast where they've told me this, their experience. And then they said the same thing. I'm not trying to like suck up to Andy or anything. Like, it's just like, it would blew me away because it was like, (laughs) you know, when was the last time you received something handwritten that wasn't like, you know, handwritten by, you know, an auto generating pen or, you know, like they actually, you know, handwrite it specific to you, right? So it was just uh, totally, totally, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Anyways, it's awesome. <laughs> it's uh, fantastic. When I, I saw when I sent those pants back, I put a thank you card and I hand wrote a thank you card in there just to be like, hey guys, thanks for everything you do. <laughs> like, <laughs> I believe in you. Like, hashtag I'm first form, all that stuff. So <laughs> I just did the same thing they do. But like, uh, hopefully, someone put, opened that box. Open the letter and read it, and it might maybe it touched them the same way that they touched me, you know. <laughs> maybe I boosted their day. That's awesome. It's awesome. So, um, when you look around at the world today, what has stood out to you the biggest way, biggest change in just how we interact as customers? Um, you know, I think I think today as customers that we want things quicker everything's about the ease of use and simplicity and like not having to do anything to get something. Um, and by that, I mean, like now I can, I can just go on my phone and I can I'm like, man, I need to get groceries today and go to Instacart and I can just pop in what I need. And then in a couple hours, there's going to be bags in my front door. You know, I can, I can do that for Uber eats or, um, any other, you know, DoorDash, whatever, you get food cooked from a restaurant. I can, I can, um, you know, I can go to Amazon and I can order something and have it usually at my door. If not today, then definitely by tomorrow. Um, everything has become instant gratification. And it's, it's not just in products. It's in almost everything in our life. 
you know, it's everything is like quicker, faster. Now we're over We're in, um, there's a book called limitless by Jim quick. And he talks about uh, the digital deluge. And it's almost like I've this heard over, about that one, such a good book. Oh, I highly recommend it for those of you watching. Like I'm going to talk, I'm going to reference a lot of books here. Uh, you definitely need to start reading. It's probably one of the most powerful things you can do to change your business if, or change your life. Um, but in, in limitless, it talks about the digital deluge and, and it talks about the, the overabundance of information. You know, if you were to compare how much points of data that people are taking in now and how much information they're taking in on a minute to minute basis throughout their day, and you compare it to even 1990, it is drastically different. And so oh, we're yeah. taking in, we're taking, we're so used to getting at the, at our, at our fingertips, we're just getting all of this information that is constantly fueling us, whether it's news, whether it's, you know, uh, advertising, whether it's people's stories or, you know, your, your social media, um, everything is just at your fingertips all the time. And that has changed the landscape <clears throat> quite a bit because everybody's on that train. Everybody's like, I want to do the same exact thing that this whole, the masses are doing. Okay. I want to, I want to be quicker. I want to ship faster. I want to be able to get right away. And everything is, is, is going towards that way. However, that's why, and that's a a good reference back to purple cows, because that's why the customer that you had was like, should I just throw this out? Because he can just get another one in like 24 hours from another company. Like they would rather, like people are almost being trained to, to, to just order another one or do whatever because everything that's made so quickly is cheap construction, cheap quality, and they're going to replace it in a year anyways. So like they don't, the, the, it's almost like the, 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 um, like we're being conditioned. Yeah. We've been conditioned for it. And, and that his, his response is a perfect response of, of the conditioning that's taking place. And it's almost like when you did that, it's, it snapped him awake. Like, oh, wow, things can be different and better. You were always, you were like Morpheus. You're like, Hey man, here's a red pill. Like see that, see a better side. Go down the rabbit hill. Let's go. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're showing him what it's like to actually have good products and service and, and not have to worry about getting things right away. That's, that's, I would say that's the biggest that's the biggest change in customer interaction is everything's automated. And so when you take something and you make it like you have a one, you have a one man show operation, it's yeah. you running everything. Um, and, and, and I, I assume, you know, with your business that you probably have a lot of one-on-one customer interaction. Yep. A very oh, personal, yeah. very personal customer interaction. Most people aren't used to that. I, I know people that would, that in their business, okay, in different industries, in their business, they would not want to do that. They would hire somebody, they would hire a, a, a um, call center team out of like the Philippines in order to do that for them because they don't want to have to deal with the customer. They're like, because in their mind, what they would think is, <clears throat> um, well, if I hire this team, they can take all of that off of my plate and I can focus more on income producing activities, what they would call it, income producing activities. I can sell more. I can do this. I can do that. I don't have to deal with the customers, but what they don't realize is that that actually hurts their brand so much. And so it's not just conditioning the customers. It's also conditioning businesses to follow that, try to follow the same model because they're trying to get rich quick. They're trying to not go through the work. They're, They're trying to build a business based off of you know, a, a, a really, really weak platform without a foundation because they don't yeah. want to have to put the foundation in. No, I like I have a client of mine and uh, he owns like an air conditioning company. <clears throat> and he's tried using these like chat bots, but they're not chat bots. It's people, you know, overseas somewhere that yeah. are that are answering questions for him. And he tells me straight out, he's had a few of these companies. The, they do like a training program. And people will be like, I just want to book it. I already have this quote. Here's my quote number. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll schedule someone to come out and give you a quote. No, no, no. Like I have my quote. I just want to book it and get it in this, you know, $3,000 job. And then they're like, okay, yeah. So uh, someone can go out and give you an estimate on, 
you know, Tuesday or something. And he's, he can see copies of all this transcript. He's like, these people are willing to pay money. And then they're like, well, screw this. You're wasting my time. And then they just leave. Right. right. So, so having these people that are not working within your company sometimes isn't worth it. So a lot of these people look at, oh, I can save labor, but what are you actually saving? Because like right now I have that one-on-one interaction, which as much as it is a stretch because I'm, I do the podcast, I have YouTube videos I put out every single week. Um, but I look at that as very treasured information. Every time I'm talking to a client, I can find out if there's something I'm doing wrong or something I can do better with the business Mm -hmm. because I'll ask them certain questions like, you know, how was the interaction or is there anything that you feel that maybe I could do different? Was it, what did you like the website? I can ask all these questions while I'm there. A lot of times I don't even ask questions anymore. People are like, you know, I bought from you because your website had so much information. I can't believe how much information you had, or they'll give me little tidbits or I hired you because you actually will educate us on the dash cameras where a lot of other places I'd ask them if they would, and they said they wouldn't. So, you know, having that information out, uh, that, that was a, that's a big thing for me because right now it's the early stages of the business. We're under two years right now. Mm -hmm. And as I start hiring people, I need to make sure that I'm still involved. And that's the thing. Andy is still involved in his day-to-day business every single day. While a lot of other business owners will just, Let's go to Mexico, grab some margaritas, kick my feet up on the beach. And, you know, oh, why is Bob calling me from finance? Like, you know, can he can he tell I'm in Mexico? But no, like you need you still need to be active. Like that life of entrepreneur isn't going to Mexico and kicking your feet up. Like, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> no, you like, got to You got to you got to love the process. You know, yeah, you have to you, you have to do it day in, day out. Like, um, you know, I, I like that you talked about about your website, having all that information. There's a really good book. I don't know if you ever read it. Um, they ask you answer by Marcus Sheridan. Oh. Um, and, and it's a, it's an internet marketing book and he was, he worked in a business. He was, he was actually selling, um, a prefabricated in-ground pools, prefab in-ground pools. Oh, okay. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> they had, they basically, uh, when the market crashed in, uh, 20, 2010, 2009, like, 2009. 20, like the 20, 20, 2008, 2009 time yeah. frame when the market crashed, like they just, their, their business started going down. And so he started lo- looking at ways to get people educated because he was like going sale, door to door sales and selling. And so he ended up creating a website and what he did was he just started putting out information and he, he knew all the questions that clients would ask. And so he would do articles on specific questions. And it just grew from there. And so he just sat there and he's like, I typed out everything. Like I just typed blog after blog, after blog, after blog, after blog, after blog. blog. And so what happened is that it started to get traction and people started going there. And they, he's like, what I found is that instead of me having to go as the salesperson to go answer questions, by the time that they were looking at the website, they could get all the answers that they wanted. And then when they talked to me, they'd already made their decision. 95% of the time, they already knew like, Hey, I want to do this. And this is what I want. And it made my sales process so much easier. So I let the website do the processing and I'm, and I constantly update it. I constantly keep it, uh, but I was answering questions that other websites weren't. I was answering questions that other, uh, um, in-ground comp, uh, pool companies would be like, schedule a call, schedule a call. And I was like, no, man, I'm going to give you everything. Like I want to be, it was, it was, it was, it was a, like a transparency thing, you know, has one oh, yeah, 100, yeah. 100% transparent. I'm gonna tell you everything. I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. He was like, and you have to be transparent, but give them all the information they're looking for. Cause a lot of people, they want to have that information and you want to have, give them like information overload to the point where it's like, they come back, they come back, they come back. And, and eventually they'll say, you know what? I've looked at, I've researched enough. This is exactly what I want. Boom, 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 boom. They'd schedule a call. And now it's not a back and forth sales process. It's a, Hey, what, how can I help? What else, what, what, what's the last information you need? Or are you ready to do business? And they, they were almost always ready to do business. So that's a great, that's a great, uh, I don't know if you did that intentionally, but <laughs> so, so that's great it's, tactic. It's funny. So everybody who emails me, I send them common questions about dash cameras, which goes to a blog, which answers about five of the most popular questions I get asked all the time. Yeah. On top of that in the blog, for every question, I have five separate videos 
So there's a video to answer every single question. So if you don't want to read, mm -hmm. it's me talking and showing pictures and images and videos of that as well. So I've made it so easy. And to be honest with you, because I what I notice. So this is the this is the one thing that I always take. If someone asks me once, it's like, yeah, someone asked me once. Someone asks me twice, it's like, okay, there's something I need to do different. Like mm -hmm. alarm bells go off. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, someone asked me, what does the GPS antenna do on a dash camera? And then I'm typing it all out, taping it all out. This is why you want one. And I'm wasting all my time typing it on my phone or typing it on the computer. And then I was like, why am I wasting so much time on this? Is it going to kill my battery? Well, well, no, this is why. And, and I'm typing out a thing again. And I'm like, you know what? I just need to make a blog on common questions about dash cameras. Yep. And then when I started and getting, direct, just direct them to the website. Yeah, that's what I did. So I just direct right. them to that. And then I usually get a, oh, there's so much great information on there and answer some other questions I was going to ask you. And now it's eliminated all much the back and forth. The other thing I noticed is I was wasting so much time uh, booking appointments with people. So I'd be going back and forth. Does Tuesday work? No, Thursday's better. Okay, well, Thursday's busy. Does Saturday work? And I'm wasting this time of all these um, going back and forth. Now I just send them here, you know, just like when we booked this, this podcast, I send them a Calendly link to book an installation. And if they're comfortable with, with that technology, they just click on it, pick their own install time, just like that. Because now it's gotten rid of all that, that back and forth, right? So yeah. it allows them to pick similar to like, if you're doing online shopping or you're, you know, ordering your skip the dishes or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's just that. What's, what's, what's skip the dishes. Skip the dishes is like our DoorDash and our uh, whatever, where you can order food. Yeah. <clears throat> that makes sense. That makes sense. But uh, so what, what is one thing you do or have done to provide a, a positive experience? Okay. Uh, okay. So about almost two years ago, almost two years ago, I uh, read this book, um, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. And uh, yeah, if you've ever read it, <clears throat> it's a, uh, Chris Voss was a military negotiator or not military, FBI negotiator. He was like the head of the FBI negotiations team. And um, he developed a negotiation system a, a tact like a set of tactics that allowed him to be very successful in um all of his negotiations like every single negotiation that happened in the fbi uh across the world really and across the united states um while he was in charge and so what he did was he took those tactics and um he applies them to the business world and so he applies them to he has a whole master class where he teaches people how to do this and the book breaks down each one of his tactics. And what they're really based in is they're based in listening and empathy. And so um, I, you know, I'd been in sales. By the time I read this, <clears throat> I had been in sales. I mean, everyone's in sales their whole life, in a, in a sense, uh, if you've ever read To Sell as Human but, <laughs> by Daniel Fink. But, um, you know, I'd been in sales as an entrepreneur for, a year and a half by this time, by the time I read this book and it completely changed my entire process of, of, of how I sold and how I dealt with customers. And so before I came in, I was very, I was very uh, data heavy. You know, I knew everything about the products and everything about what I was doing. I'd sit down and be like, Hey, this is why you want this, boom, 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 boom. But I never really took time to take an account of somebody's situation. And so, um, when I, when I, after I read that book, I started to do something very simple. I started to just listen and I started to ask really good questions. He teaches you how to ask really good questions and how to ask open-ended questions that start with what or how, never why, because when I say, why, why did you do this? Or why didn't you do this? That comes off as a very accusatory. So like, for instance, I, you know, I work in insurance and um, if I say, if you don't have an insurance policy and I say, why don't you have an insurance policy? It's kind of, it's kind of a slap in the face. Like, you know, if you think about it versus if I say, what's prevented you from having, from getting a policy up until now, that's a much different posed question, you know, 
but it still get answers the same way. Because at this point, they can basically say, this is the reason. It's like almost like a, a third party entity. There's some other reason that they can point and blame to without saying that without them saying, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm just lazy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is basically is the, the first one. Why haven't you, why don't you have one? And so, and I don't want to put clients on the spot, but I still want them to identify the reasons of what's holding them back. So I know how to actually address that as a salesperson. So asking really good, you know, I, and I completely changed my entire sales process, you know, asking questions that start with what and how and open-ended questions. And so just for an example, you know, prior to reading this book, or prior to changing everything, I would go in and let's say I'm selling a burial policy, a simple fight, what's called final expense, burial policy, insurance plan. And I say, um, Hey, uh, they, they, I got a lead. Someone signed up online, like on Facebook or something. And I sit down with them and I'm like, Hey, Ben, Hey, uh, Hey, my name's Greg. Nice to meet you. And, you know, I'm here to help you to find out the final insurance, the final expense insurance plan. And, you know, most of my clients, they usually sign up to look for this for one of three reasons. It's either a, they don't have any plan in place. It's B, they have a plan in place, but they're looking to modify it or increase the coverage or C they just want to leave behind a legacy to like kids or grandkids. So out of those three, which one is the best, which one best kind of fits what you're looking for. And I would let them tell me. And, and when I, after I read the book, what I realized was what I was doing was I was creating boxes for them that were prefabricated by my verbiage and making them select one. What if they didn't fit in any of them? What happened was that most clients wouldn't tell me. And I don't know what really their motivation is because it's forced upon them to pick one of three. There could be a million different reasons why they're, they're looking at it. That maybe it kind of fits in one of those boxes, but maybe not. And so it's like multiple choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Instead of multiple choice, I went to short answer. <laughs> and I said, and I said, Hey, uh, now I'm now when I sit down with a client, I say, Hey, Hey, what motivated you to uh, start looking for this kind of coverage? Very simple, very basic. And then I shut up and I listen and I, and I take notes and I write everything down and I say, huh. And I, and he teaches you things like asking proper questions. He did you things like mirroring. So like if they, if I sit down with a client and they're like, uh, I'm just looking for some coverage because, you know, I don't have anything in place. I'll be like, hmm, you don't have, you don't have anything in place. And then they'll I'll pause and they'll be like, well, yeah. And, and they'll expound on what they said, because instead of me saying, Hey, tell me more about that. I can just do mirroring and I can say the last three things that they said in a, in a downward, almost inquisitive tone, like, Hmm. You don't have anything in place, which is like, tell me more. And I'll get them to just naturally expound upon it. And what the purpose is that I want them to speak more than I'm speaking. I want them to get comfortable talking to me. I want them to share things with me. And I'm, they're not going to share those things if, if um, you know, I'm not listening, if I'm not asking the right questions. And so um, I completely changed my, my entire sales process to, to that. Uh, you know, I started mirroring. Um, and, and I think the biggest piece is empathy, you know, and, and he, he talks about it. He calls it tactical empathy and, and empathy purely is the ability to take an account, to listen and take an account of somebody's viewpoints, their situation and what they're saying. You do not have to disagree or disagree with anything that they're saying. You just have to understand what they're saying. And so what I would do is I would ask him these questions. I had about five questions I would ask similar to this podcast. And I would, I would ask about five questions. And then I would ask some health questions after that. And then I would say, Hey, let me make sure. And I've been writing everything down and I've been doing mirroring. And I'll, at the end, sometimes I'll say, Hey, that makes a lot of sense. It sounds like you want this, this, or this, just as a clarification, just tell them like, I'm listening to you. But at the end, I would capture all the data and I would say, hey, let me go ahead and make sure that I understand where you're coming from. And I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to 
uh, repeat everything you just told to me to make sure that I understand. And if I'm missing anything, please feel free to let me know. And then I would tell exactly, and I would I would literally set down my paper and my pen and I'd sit aside and I'd look them in their eye and I'd say, hey, it sounds to me that the reason that you're you're looking for this kind of coverage is because you don't have any in place. Now, you used to have some in place when you were working, but then you retired and you lost your coverage because your work coverage didn't go with you. And you, what got you thinking about this is because your mom passed away and your mom doesn't have any, didn't have any coverage in place. And you ended up having to pay out of pocket to pay for that funeral. And that made you say, man, I really don't want this to happen to my kids. So you started looking now you've been looking for about six months and you've talked to some other agents that haven't been able to help you because they keep showing you plans that don't make sense to you or are too expensive for you. But you know, this is something you got to get done and you want to get it done as soon as possible. And you know that as you get older, that you're going to be more likely to, to, to uh, um, get sick or get a, a disease or an illness that's going to preclude you from being approved with the best possible policy. Is that all about right? And there's something powerful that happens in that moment. Because I'm looking at them as I look them in the eyes and I tell their whole story, but from my viewpoint, with my words, and I'm basically saying, I understand you. I understand where you're coming from. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to disagree with it, but I do understand you. And empathy is a very powerful tool. And what I'm looking for every single time when I do that is I'm looking for them to say, yeah, that's right. Not a, uh-huh, not a yes, but a, yeah, that's right. Because it's like it clicks in their mind, like, Everything he said, like it was from, from, I basically told their story, but from a different, from a, with different words, with my words. Yeah. It, move, it oh, yeah. moves, it moves them. And they're like, man, that's, that's so right. And, I, and, I, and then at that point, what I've done is I've earned so much favor. I've shown professionalism because everyone wants to be like, I want to show that I'm a professional. So they'll be like, they'll show, they, they'll walk in, they'll be like, here's my license. I've been licensed for this many years. Blah, blah. That doesn't, they don't care about that. I'm already, I'm already sitting in their home having a conversation. I'm a stranger. Like These people signed up online either with a, a lead or they filled out a piece of paper and they mailed it in and it got to me. And I called them a stranger because they got their lead information and said, hey, I'm, I'm the person that this came to. I need to set up a time to come sit down with you and talk. You know, Let's do this at this time, this, this, t- this day, this time, or this day, this time, which works best for you. And then they would pick a day and time. And now I come there, I sit down, I, they let me in their front door. I'm a complete stranger. I'm dude, I'm six, seven, two fifty. I look like I play for the Dallas Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm a, I'm a big dude. I tell them that too. I'm like, Hey, just so you know, when I come over, I'm a big dude. So, so they're, I'm sitting at their coffee table or their kitchen table with them. I don't need to sit there and be like, Oh, here's my license. Here's this, here's that. You know what? I'm already sitting in, they already know I'm licensed. If they, if they didn't think I was licensed, I wouldn't be in their home. You know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of, come on. And so it's like these people, these agents, they don't understand the psychology behind all this. And so what that book did is it, it it's weird. I actually have that book on my desk. Uh, I'm doing, I do a reading club with my agents and I, I'm, I'm making them read this. Um, and I, I learned the psychology behind it that helped my sales just skyrocket and exponentially skyrocket. And I turned from being that salesperson that was constantly trying to just push sales to somebody that actually cared for clients. And then by the end of it, they're like, what do we do? How do we fix this? How do I sign up for this? I'm not, I'm not pushing the sale. They're asking me for it. But see, to me, that's the big difference on selling based on lifestyle or what their needs are going to be than just trying to push something on somebody. Yeah. And like in a retail environment, you know, I can just take this box and you know what I mean? Like, you need this box. Here you go. And just, you know, ram it down your, you know, or I could say, hey, you know what? We have all these boxes, but, you know, Based on your lifestyle, your needs, and what you need, I think this box actually is going to work best mm-hmm. for you. Or yeah. I don't think anything we have is going to fit what you need. That's occasionally, also occasionally I've had to do that. Like, hey, you know what? I know what you want. I don't have what you need. And then that's where you, you know, like Andy you get says, referrals like crazy. Be the guy, 
Hey, you know what? But if you call this person, I think they could take care of you. Yes. I, you know what, when I started doing that, because I released the, I released the want for the sale. And I said, you know what? I started doing like affirmations and stuff. Like I'm the best person to take care of his clients. I'm the best person to take care of his clients. I used to literally stand in the mirror and I'd hold my leads. Cause I like, I had this nervousness. I was just, like scared to get on the phone and like do sales. And I would like, and I would just, I called my leads up. I'm like, I'm going to call these people. I'm the best person to help this. I'm the best agent. I'm the best advisor, et cetera. And I would go over this just to like get my mind right. And, and, and it really, it was like a, it was like a shift in my mindset. Cause I, I really did start trying to just what was best for them, not best for me to get a sale. So when I sat with people and I was like, Hey, look, like I like to try to put you in this policy, but I don't think you're going to be approved. I can put you in this policy, but if you do it through me, it's going to be way more expensive. This is what I recommend. I yeah, recommend like- and I would send them to, I'd send them straight to a carrier. And I'd be like, Hey, don't work with an agent because the, the reason that, you do these kind of policies and they're more expensive when you go through an agent because the agent has to get paid, but you can go directly to this carrier or this carrier. You can do it all online. It cuts the agent out. No agents get paid, which makes the policy cheaper. And then when I tell them that and they actually do it, then they you know what happens is that they're so grateful. They're so thankful that I didn't just try to force something on them that then they're like, Hey, uh, my daughter, really need some insurance and I, and I trust you. Can you, here's her number. I told her that you're going to call. Can you help her out? I absolutely, I can. Absolutely. I'd love to. I've gotten more referrals from those kinds of people. And I keep trying to tell this to my agents. I'm like, do not push a product just because they get a sale. Don't do it just to get a sale. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're not taking care of the client. And so yeah. you, you buy Every single time you do these little things, when you, when you listen, when you ask good questions, when you show empathy, when you don't push a product, it's like you're making deposits into that client, okay? When you, when you go out, when you're creating your blogs and you're giving your clients all the information that they need so that they can go ahead and research on their own without having to jump through hoops to try to get on the phone with a salesperson and that salesperson is trying to shove something down their throat, you know, and try to get them to say yes to everything and like shove that. Yes, yes, yes. So that, that's that crappy sales technique. When you do that, you're making deposits into these clients because there's going to come a time when you're going to have to take withdrawals. And those withdrawals is when you come in and say, Hey, this is what I think we should do. This is the, the, here's your problem as I understand it. And here are the solutions. Let's start with this one. They're more willing to listen to your solutions because you've already made deposits. You've already showcased that you care. And so like, I, I, like that concept right there, it, it, it bypasses so many people. But people that care about quality, like you were talking about the, the, uh, the gentleman that's in Arte that is purely referral. He understands this. I guarantee you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm bet I'm betting that his product and his entire process for how he does his product, his say, his service, all of it, it is so top notch that those people, when they get done, they're like, that was awesome. That was the best experience ever. And it's because he understands he's making deposits into those people in order for him to get those withdrawals. The, the withdrawals are much better. It's like, hey, I got to deposit $10 in order to get 100 People these days, they don't want to deposit anything. They want something for nothing. They don't want to invest in their business. They don't want to oh, do Oh, yeah, no. I totally agree because uh, so many people, I've worked for so many owners that... They don't want to invest anything in their people. They don't want to invest anything in their company. I had a client recently and I was talking to him about the podcast and what I'm doing and the topics and the, you know, the guests that we have on and all the different aspects. And he goes, do you know how much money my company that I worked for for 40 years put into me? And I go, I don't know. He goes, guess. And I'm like, I don't know. Zero. $30,000. He goes, a million dollars. They invested a million dollars into me. He goes, every single training that they could send me to, every single year I went to. He goes, and because of all that, that's where I am where I am. Because they value their people. Mm -hmm. He goes, there's very few companies that do that anymore. 
He goes, they he, invest over a yeah. million dollars in me. This guy like designs bridges, you know, like that kind of stuff. Right. So, you know, obviously that's like, I think that's civil engineering or whatever. Right. But he, he's just talking about how they invested in all these different trainings. So he has all this different experience. And now over the last few years, now he does consulting. So now he goes and tells people how to do their business. And he goes, and I get paid even way more yeah. because they invested in me over all those years. And and that's, it's, it's little things like that that make the difference, you know, like even with my company, um, you know, with, I'm really tapped in with Andy and Emily Frisella. Emily has that like women in business uh, workshop that's going on. Um, the tickets just went on sale yesterday. I have three women from my company that we paid for to go to that. That were like, hey, we want you to go to this because it's a three-day seminar. You're gonna learn about a lot about business. You're gonna make connections with people, and you're gonna learn tactics and techniques from people that are that are super successful in business. And so we're paying for them to go. And it's awesome. like, and so like two of the two of the women are like, man, this is like no other no other insurance organization has done this for us. And it's like, yeah, well, we want to be different. We want to actually build people. I like my vision, my goal for for Evangelical Burgers for where I work is is I want to I want to build better people. I don't care about better producers. I do. I mean, I do. Don't be wrong. I, but it's not like I don't want to be pe- make, make people to be the best producers. I want to make people better people. I want to I want I want when they work here that they enjoy. They have a great work life balance. That they are growing. They're learning. They're educating themselves. They have self study. They're they're reading daily. They're taking control of their own business. They're being challenged. They're, they're working more efficiently but eff- and effectively, but also they're working hard. And at the end of the day, they're a better husband, father, mother, wife, daughter, son, producer, business owner. They're better in all areas. You know what I'm saying? They're, it's not just, I don't want to just push people to produce, 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 produce because people get burnt out. I want people to learn. I want people to grow. You know, and so yeah, no, I, I, I completely building agree that relationship, that. right? Building that yeah. relationship. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, if there's one thing you could change in the entire world today, what would it be and why? Man, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Um, I would, um, So you you know you've done seventy five hard too, and yeah. so you know what it's you know what it feels like to to have God mode, you know. Um, and for those of you watching, if you know what we're talking about, you know. And for those of you that don't know, you should go look up uh, seventy five hard, uh, seventy five hard and go to indyfrasella dot com, or you can listen to the Real AF podcast uh, episode fourteen. And um, it literally does change your life. It does change your life. If we could, if, if I could take for 30 seconds and I could have other people feel what it feels like to be in God mode, I think it would change their life. It would, they would, they, they would do the work in order to achieve that. They'd fight to achieve that again. And so I, I think the one thing I want to change is people's inability to act. Their inability to act and in, in giving people the will to act, and that's, I mean, what, what I do, you know, I, 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 I'm a, an insurance, uh, an, I am, I, I own an IMO, or I'm partner with an IMO, and I own my insurance agency, and I have my own business, and I run a podcast, and, and I really do care about about influencing and and helping salespeople, agents, business owners. So as a business and entrepreneurship and sales leadership podcast. And I believe that leadership makes the difference, a good leadership. And, and so I, if I could, <clears throat> I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to find new and, and like the questions I ask myself and I'm trying to like solve on a daily basis, is like, how can I inspire more people to act, to move? Because if that really is the difference. Everything that everyone wants out of life is right behind the door of like action. It's knowledge is knowledge is power. Yes. But it's the application of knowledge that becomes the power. Just gaining knowledge and doing nothing with it is not power. It's stored. It's like stored energy that you're not releasing, you know? And so learning and teaching people to do the actions and educating them 
it's if we could have more people, even if we could increase the population size or increase the population to uh, or, uh, the population of people that that actually act and are and are willing to do it by ten percent, that would make a massive impact. That would make a massive impact across the country of, and everything that's going on and in in businesses and and people's success in their lives and in in depression and anxiety. So I'm I I'm a I'm a veteran. Uh, I'm a disabled veteran. I uh, I'm I'm diagnosed with PTSD, and what I can tell you is that um, I've I've actually I've actually um, had suicidal ideations, and I'd suffer I've suffered with that. And in the times when my life was darkest, it was because I was doing nothing with my life. I had all these grandeur dreams of grandeur, and things weren't going my way because I wasn't doing the work. I wasn't acting. And when, and, and other things in life were falling apart was because I wasn't becoming the best version of myself. And I, and I struggled with that after I got out of the military for a while. And it took, it took for me to kind of burn my ships and just realize that like, cause I was in insurance for a little bit before I started finding success. And I was, I sucked. It was terrible. I was not making money. I was not profitable. I was not successful. I barely sold. And so for me to just act and do, and just start doing the work for me to start to get away from that mindset of like, of the anxiety and the depression and to start to feel better and to start to work through these things. And I, and I tell you, um, you know, I, I take, I, I was taking escitalopram, which is a, like a knockoff of a, anxiety medication that the, the military gives you is uh, let's go VA. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, I, I, after 75 hard, after I completed 75 hard the first time, I have not taken a pill since. That's awesome. Because, because yeah. my mindset's completely different. And I truly believe that we can cure a lot of people's anxiety and depression by giving them purpose by having them find their why, which is also another great book with Simon. I love Simon. Sinek. Simon Sinek. Yeah. Simon Sinek's the man. And if you haven't read, find your, find your why or start with why start with why is actually better, I think, but start with why and the concept of the golden circle also changed my business quite a bit, but that's a separate story. Um, you know, if you, if, if I, we can teach people to start to, to find what their why is and actually move with that and act have the inspiration to act, you would see anxiety and depression rates just drop in, in, and people would be happier. They'd be better people. Um, but it all starts with action. Like you, you, people have to understand that they have to act And the problem. The problem that I think all of this stems from is the nature that we talked about earlier at the beginning of the podcast of what, how everything's changing to immediate to now to, I want to be able to get this now. I want to be able to order this, my phone, and it come to me. I want six minute abs. I want uh, a yeah, business venture that gets, that, that gets me, that gets me $20,000 <laughs> a month in 30 days. That, that doesn't fucking exist. It doesn't. So you, got, you, you have to do the work. So Greg, like with the whole 75 hard, both of us have done it. Yeah. And for people who don't know what it is, you know, it's two 45 minute workouts. Mm -hmm. One's one has to be done outside. Yep. You have to drink one gallon of water a day. Mm -hmm. You have to pick a diet and stick to it. Yep. Drink. You have to read 10 pages out of a book every day. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember if I just forgot something. Take a selfie. Take a selfie every single day. Thanks. And, and, no and no alcohol. Part of the diet. No alcohol. Yeah. Not a drop of alcohol. And I'll, honestly, I'll tell you, no alcohol is a change is a game changer. I lost 27 pounds in that 75 days. And honestly, I looking in the mirror, I didn't think I really lost any weight. When you look at those pictures of how From far day you one came, to day 75. Yes. You don't, like, you don't realize it. It's every crazy. Day that's why you, and that's why you take the pictures. Everyone's like, ah, I actually had a guy. Um, that's he's one of my agents and he works in, in the company. And, 
Um, I've, I've inspired a lot of agents to start 75 hard just because, and that's the, that's the other thing is that when you start to act and you start to do, and you start to just kick ass on another level, you inspire others around you. They see it. They can feel it in your energy. They can, they can, they just know. And they're like, man, this guy is like doing something different. I want, I want some of the secret sauce he's drinking. And I'm like, you know what it is? It's 75 hard. Go do it. It'll change your life. And it will. It's and so I've got crazy. so many it's it, it's it's insane. It's like it's literally taking the limitless pill. It just the way it opens your mind and the things that I've learned. I'm sitting here talking as pockets. How many books have I referenced? I promise you, two years ago, I could not have referenced not one of those books. Oh yeah, that's that's why I was like, I'm not going to ask him the book question. We've already talked about like six <laughs> we books. Talked about so many books. <laughs> like, you know, I'll buy those books. <laughs> no, they're they're great books. And and uh, you know, I, I I didn't start reading books like this until 75 Hard. And I'll tell you, like. That's changed my life. It's changed my business. Changed everything. So I, I got these people in there, and I'm and I'm doing this influence. You know, I'm being I'm influencing by doing. You know, and man, I could I could sit here and talk about this all day. Um, I'm influencing by doing, and these and these other agents are are wanting to jump on. I had an agent. He's like he's like man, I had to start over because I wasn't taking pictures every day, and it hit me like like I, I guess I got to do it every day because he saw somebody else had dropped out, you know, cause I've, I've got like probably 30 of my agents that are doing this, that are doing this, the 75 hard. I've, 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 every day more and more are jumping up. And one of them, they, they, at the day 60, they forgot to take a picture. They had to get, they had to start back at day one. And, uh, and somebody else was called me. He's like, yeah, I saw that person said they, they had to start back there in day one. And, and I was like, man, I guess I got to too. Cause I've been taking a picture like once every three days. So I'm like, what? And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I really don't like taking selfies. I didn't really see the point, but what? And I was like, dude, that, the, that is the point right there is that you do it regardless of you don't change the plan. You don't change the program. You do everything oh, as part of the system. You do not, uh, there's no excuses, no exceptions. No, you don't make any compromises. That's the point. That's, and I was that's like, what Andy gets like fired up too. I do. I do like, too. I do too. Oh, when people, the problem with people nowadays, want to <laughs> yeah, change they wanna, they wanna, to they want to cut corners. For you. Exactly. Oh, and I'm like, dude, if you, the point of the of that is like, it, one, it's a small thing. Taking a picture every day is really small. And everyone's like, oh, I'll tell you, I think I can do it. I promise you, it knocks out most of you. I promise oh, you. Because you. It's the small <laughs> details. But at the end of it, you realize what the power of that is. Cause when you see day one, you look at day 75, you're like, damn, I did change. I did transform. And that progress people progress is what brings happiness and joy progress. And when you see that progress, that's why I, I, be, I believe wholeheartedly that program helps people with anxiety and depression because you see the progress you see physically right there. Think about any time that you've ever been truly happy. Like truly like joyful about doing something, but maybe it was school sports. Maybe it was, it was something in school where you were really good at a, at a, uh, a specific subject. doesn't matter, but it's because you had progress within that, within that realm, within that area. Let's say it was like peewee football and you, you started off the year and you were okay. But by the end of the year, you were great. You probably really enjoyed, like it made you happy to look back and be like, man, I've come a long way. Because it's progress. I gotta, I gotta add something here on the whole seventy-five hard thing. So I finished it at the end of November, and I came out of that flying with like crazy punches. Just, you know, I was scared for the longest time to make videos, and boom, I started making yeah. YouTube videos. Three weeks yeah. later, I contacted someone in RK. Boom, December twenty-third, I'm making a podcast. I came out of there swinging so hard with so much focus. And the other thing that people don't realize is probably about 45 days into the 75 hard program, your time is so valuable that it came to the point yeah. where I was like, I don't have time for this. This is a waste of my time. And I would just be like, I'm not doing it because this is a waste of my time. You start really valuing your time and sort of looking at your time. I started because even in it, I, I always thought like, oh, I don't have any time in the day. Everybody says I don't have any time. Right, that's the biggest lie we tell ourselves. It's the biggest lie. But then I look back at it. I was watching probably four hours of TV. So you're saying I couldn't do an hour and a half worth of workouts or yeah. I couldn't go work out because it's raining. 
I yeah. couldn't go work out because it's snowing. How powerful was, do you feel after an outside workout after it's raining or snowing? How about how badass do you feel like towards like the middle of, and, and when you first start, you're like, man, screw this. But by like the middle, you're like, yeah, I'm getting this done. Yeah. Oh, like, man. Like, <laughs> I was outside walking and, and I don't know how if you follow the news up here in Canada. No. Our floods hit us so bad out here that literally sections of our highways were destroyed. So I was mm. going out there doing 75 hard rains barreling down on me so hard. I'm soaked. When I get home, my shoes are completely soaked right from doing like a 45 minute walk. Right. Cause I, I would mainly walk. I, I don't do good with running, unfortunately on concrete, yeah. but the whole thing was I was still going out in those elements. It's just water at the right. end of the day. It's just water, but so and many it's, people it's stop you from finishing the job. Yeah, like you just you just got to do it, right? You just got to do it. Yeah. yeah, it's but you find um, in seventy five hard. I mean, all this stuff kind of come to a head. It's like it's it, the I love the alignment piece that Annie talks about, where everything kind of comes in alignment, like your mind, your body, your spirit, everything. Just like everything kind of aligns perfectly for what you're doing. And, um, I completely changed everything and how I did it based off the books I was reading, everything I was learning 75 hard, my mindset, the mental toughness I started to gain the open, like just open mindedness. I'm just like, wow, like it's possibilities are really endless, like of what I'm going to achieve and accomplish because it's, I'm telling you, it's like the limitless pill. So we're over here, you know, Ben and I are sitting here like Morpheus telling you to take the pill, take the red pill, go down, the, <laughs> go down this rabbit hole with us, you know, find Who's the truth. Alice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but what I realized is that, you know, I used to recruit it's uh, the, the, the insurance industry is a heavy recruiting business and it's, and it churns. It's like any other sales organization. It churns and burns. And they, it's all about recruiting as many people as possible and churning through those people in order to find the top producers and letting everybody kind of fall to the wayside. And I've never believed in that model. I think it's garbage because when it comes to insurance industry, you should have, you should have the, the, the IMO or the agency or whatever you're working for. It's their responsibility to have methods or uh, uh, the how you're going to accomplish the job, the sales portion, whether it's products, training, leadership, leads, and whatever. It's their responsibility to provide that to agents. Now the agents... They have to do the work. They have to be actually do the training. I, I can lead them to the water, but I can't grab them by the scruff of their neck and force their face out. You know what I'm saying? Like they have to do actually do it. So the, the, the what they have to do, the how I can provide. Okay. And so what I realized is that instead of, instead of focusing on trying to get all these people to come to me, instead of trying to recruit all these people, instead I'm just going to set an example of what the best version of somebody can look like. And I started just kicking ass and everything. I ended up breaking sales records that still haven't been broken in the insurance industry. I ended up doing so many things that I got this following of people like, dude, I want to be like that guy. So I started just working on myself. And what I did was I attracted all these people. And now I just do my podcast and I help people, but I still continue to operate at a high level. And instead of me trying to recruit people, I'm attracting the people based on them looking and saying, I want to be like that. I want to be a part of that organization because there's something special going on there. So I, I've done the difference of like putting out a bunch of fishing lines and just fishing for agents to becoming a magnet and attracting them based on similar vision, based on someone wants, based on similar whys. And that's why I like Simon Sinek. Cause you, when you, when you recruit somebody, if you recruit them based on, based on money, they'll work for money period. And when the money doesn't come or when they want more money, they will leave. But if you recruit somebody and you do it based off of their why, based off of what they believe to be true, their why becomes, your why becomes their why. So they're doing it for themselves, not for you. And so what happens is they'll work with blood, sweat, and tears. They'll work to the, to the end of the earth, even if no money's coming in, because they believe it in their, in their heart and soul. And so I would rather attract people based off of their why 
and show this is what we believe in in the industry. And it's been a massive difference. And, and it starts with, it's, it starts. As, so if you have a business or if you have something like that, you can do this with clients. This doesn't just work. I'm giving the example of, of you know, agents, but th- this works with clients too. Because this is like Simon Sinek also talks about not trying to, not trying to sell to everybody, selling to the people that is your niche market, that your product can serve and you can, you can work the best with. When you do that, your customer experience will change. You have, you'll have people that, like I was talking about the law diffusion of innovation, those early adopters will get you past that 10% mark, which is called crossing the chasm because that 10% mark is the tipping point where once you get past that tipping point, you're going to get into the majority of the market. You're going to get into the remainder of the 90%, which really the last 16% is what's called the laggards. Those people still have rotary phones. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, those are the people that they only get, they only st- got a Nokia phone because they can't find a new rotary phone at the store. So they're like, they're like, they're going to get the love. They don't even worry about the laggards. That's like the last 16% of the market, but the remainder 84%, the top, the, the first 10% is all those early adopters. And then the remaining 74%, that's the mass market, but you're not, you, you cannot market yourself by trying to go to the mass market. You market yourself by going to the early adopters. You let the early adopters go ahead and, and, and do the marketing, do the sneezing of your idea virus, of your product, of your service, of whatever it is in order to get to the, to the mass market. And then that's when you, when you cross the chasm, it's that tipping point, but it starts with having starting with why that's how you that's how you actually get to those people you you sell them by your why you sell them by that um you you once you have that 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 market man it's it's a done deal you know so it works with it works with clients it works with recruiting it works with everything you could change your entire business change you so but gotta start with what your why is you know and like that you should see that every single day it's awesome. This is great. It's a so, great I podcast. <laughs> People, they're going to love all these nuggets in here, man. <laughs> I, you know, I, yeah, I, I love talking to people. I do. Um, and I love, I love inspiring and, um, I do, I do talks for, well, for my company, we have, we have, um, sales, sales conferences where I talk to agents. I do a podcast. I do a weekly like live training with, with all my agents on a zoom. Um, but I also, I hold a podcast where I talk about leadership sales and entrepreneurship. And, and it's it, honestly the, the, the tactics that I've learned and how I teach it, it can apply to any sales organization. It can apply, not just to insurance. It could apply to medical device sales, you know, because, um, sales is timeless. The, in the, in the act of sales, like, you know, it's, it's applicable across the entire spectrum of any industry. So. Nice. Oh, I mean, thanks. Thanks for coming on, man. This is wicked. And yeah, yeah we're going to have to do this again. Revisit yeah, this. man. Anytime, like a, dude. We need to do like a 75 hard one where we just talk about 75 hard because I think we could have went on that for like two hours. <laughs> Bro, do you know what? I'm actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm going to go on the RK Syndicate um, page and I'm going to say, hey, I want to do a 75 hard podcast yeah. and like, and just do like pick out people. That, yeah, that's I'd 75 freaking, hard and i'd like, be totally dude, down for that man dude totally yeah i'm gonna go i'm actually gonna go post that now now that i think that's a good idea because <laughs> i dude, i would love to do a 75 hard podcast and just get people rolling uh because i i, I that's why i buy like i literally like i was telling you i i buy 20 75 hard books a, a, a month i'd buy 10 every every two weeks and I ship them out to people for free. And if you if you want to get one, you need to follow me on my Instagram. It's Greg Birch eighty four. But I post it on there, and it's the first ten people. And I always tell people, if you say I want a book, that's you committing publicly that you're saying I'm going to do this. And all I want you to do is I want you to read the book. I want you to actually read it. You're not getting something for free for and not doing anything. But I'm going to send it to you. I want you to read the book, and I want you to actually start the program. And it will change your life. And I promise you it will change your life. The, the power behind that program is unbelievable. What, what Andy created is it does 
I've, I've been sitting there thinking like, man, how could I recreate the program for like insurance agents? And it's just like, dude, I don't need to just do the program. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, it changed my life. It changed my business. I, I was able to do things that nobody's been able to do, you know, and, and it's because of my belief in myself and it, that has to do with the program. So yeah, I would love to sit down and just hash it out with a bunch of, a bunch of people just to, to get that message out even more and inspire people even more because it's just, it's so powerful as you, as you know, Ben, it's and maybe we just need, you just need to have like three or four people even on just like a crazy 75 hard round table. Or yeah. Something. Like a, I like, like a panel podcast. I would love that. I would love that. That'd be pretty cool. You could have like four people, the four squares, you know? Yeah. I got So I do, I do a, another program that I use for my podcasting. I used to do zoom. Um, I do another, another program that's called a uh, stream yard. If you ever want to know about it, oh, I, can yeah, show yeah. It to you. I actually created a StreamYard account and I just never used it because it's pretty I, good. It's pretty I enrolled good to do LinkedIn live because I thought it was like, you know, I go onto my phone or something and that, that and then I just, then I found out, oh, you need StreamYard and you need to do all this extra stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'm not comfortable going fully live yet. <laughs> so yeah, man, I would, I would love to do that. In fact, as soon as we get off of here, I'm going to go post that. That's awesome. That's wicked. So, yeah. I guess, uh, yeah, no, I guess thanks for coming on and uh, my pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. Thanks for listening to the Focus on Customer Experience podcast. podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. For more information or to connect with Ben, check out Benjamin Del Grosso on LinkedIn at Safe Drive Solutions on Instagram or www.safedrivesolutions.ca online. We'll see you next time.